in today's show. We're looking at the fantasy basketball waiver wire. Michael Bolton, he's looking at it as well. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore Beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today's episode is brought to you by McDonald's, proudly serving communities since 1965. McDonald's has always been more than just a place to get tasty and affordable food. It's an unofficial community center. A big thank you to our friends at McDonald's for always being there and always providing the cheesies that we need. I'm loving it. Thank you also for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. All right, let's platform this one and look at some waiver wire options. Starting off where we do by looking at the most added players. Chetty, Chetty Osman, I don't know why I said him first. He's going to be second. Chemezi Metu, that's why. Um, that's who we're looking at, number one. I've talked about him for a week. He's being added everywhere. I hope you got on. I don't know if it's going to continue. Did a whole segment on him yesterday in the I Request elaboration in the daily recap. You can go back and check that. I think he should be added in all leagues. Um, all 12 team leagues, to be fair. Not Probably not 10s. It might completely burst. Like It might blow up in your face. It just might not be good. He might do a Jared Vanderbilt and start and then play 20 minutes and then go to the bench and then move in and out. Like it might be that. Or it might be that he just starts and plays 28 minutes a night and puts up 13 and 7 with a block and a 3. And that's useful. Add him. Chitty Osman's more short term. It's with Jared Allen, Larry Markin, Colin Sexton, Evan Mobley out. He's going to have an increased role. He'll get usage. He can hit some threes. He can pass. It won't last long, but he's being added in a lot of spots. Makes sense. Um, Larry Nance Jr., it's been a dreadful start to the season for Nance. They've barely been using him. But over the last two to three games, we are seeing Nance play more center. We are seeing, unfortunately, Yusuf Nurkic get minimized, which I, I think is an incorrect decision by Billups, but I'm not an NBA coach. And we're seeing Nance's minutes go up and him being used as a closing center. Now, I am all for Nance taking all of Cody Zeller's backup center minutes. And if he can play 26 minutes a night, Larry, he probably is worth a look. Now, he hasn't done that yet. It is trending in that direction with Covington and Nurkic going backwards. Nance and Little are going up. We'll talk about Nasir Little a little bit later on. So Nance is worth worth a look for sure. Kevin Love, short-term ad for, for certain with Mobley and Allen both out and Markinen. There's not many big men left. It's him and Dean Wade. And I know which one of those is a better player. Love is not a long-term solution, but he's a short-term option. Uh, Monty Morris, Barton looks like he's going to be returning. So... Yeah, that little boost that Morris has had recently is not necessarily going to sustain, but I like what he's doing. So he is worth a look. Taylor Horton Tucker thinks he's a must roster player at this stage. LeBron might be back for their next game, the Lakers. So Horton Tucker, we get a real indication of where THT sits, but yeah, the return of Nunn and Ariza, that's ages away. And Horton Tucker's better than those guys. He's their fourth best player, maybe third, maybe third and a half. So he is going to get, I think, pretty significant a pretty significant role. It'll just be whether he can get the ball in his hands enough when LeBron is back to have that impact. Contavious Caldwell Pope, I don't know why he is being added in huge amounts of leagues. Um, like, he's okay. He's a steals sort of option. But I don't know why he's being like added in your yeah, big, big chunks of leagues. That seems a, a little bit, especially with 11 games on today, I get that you know, you've got certain players out in Washington, but Bradley Beal is back. I don't really understand that one. Josh the Hitman Hart, he's playing good minutes for sure. I, I don't think he's a stupendously high upside player. Um, he's fine to have. And then Duncan Robinson after his last two games, and I suppose with Jimmy Butler still questionable, there is some increased value for Robinson. But as you're going to see on the next slide, I don't particularly agree with having Duncan Robinson as a guy that you need to add everywhere. Because when we're talking about droppable players, he's on the list. And when I say droppable players, again, what I need to make 100% clear, you do not have to drop these players. This does not mean get rid of them. This means that you have to consider that as an option, that you have to, if there is a player who's very good coming off IR, and if you look at your roster with a clear eye, 
these guys, if they're your worst player, they can go. Like we're not holding on. Go off. They're my worst player. I'll just, you know, I'll just stick fat with it, and I'll feel confident moving forward, and I won't worry about streaming or hot wave wire ads. I'm in a great spot. Like if they're your worst player, you can give them the ass. And that's how I feel about Duncan Robinson. I don't have Danthony Melton on this list, but I reckon I'll throw him in this mix as well. And I reckon I'd throw Desmond Bain in that mix too. If they're your worst player, um, with Dylan Brooks coming back and Brooksing things up, it is tough to look at those guys as 100% must roster. I wouldn't say they're necessarily quite in 100% droppable, but they're, they're pretty much there. This is a controversial one and it's controversial just for my own sake because I hate doing it. But I think Robert Covington's a droppable player. He hasn't been good this season. I don't think anyone would argue that with you. He's losing minutes to Nance and Little. He's playing like 24 a night. He's absolutely absent from the offense. He'll have the occasional game where he has the three blocks, where he has the three steals, and you go, Bob Cuff's back, my guys. He's back, he's flying. And then he has two points in the next one. All right, in a points league, don't have any hesitation. Egan Jack Armstrong, his ass all the way out of there. Get that garbage out of here! Now, Covington last game had 11 points with three threes and three blocks. You go, that's Covington. That's awesome. That's sick. And he had 3.6 points, 6 points, 7 points in the, the three games prior to that, playing 23, 22, 19, and 23 minutes over his last four games. Um, he is, this season, in category leagues, the 139th ranked player. Do you want to hold for that? Like, I know he can be better, but it's not like he's sh shooting 35%. He's shooting 41%. That's not a disaster for Covington. He's shooting 40% from three. It's just that the minutes are down. The high, massive high steals and blocks aren't there. The usage is, I don't know, small as an ant stick. Like, it's no, nowhere to be seen. I hate to say it, but I think he's a go. I think he's a guy to go, get rid of. Darius Baisley, he's too inconsistent. Again, you can have him. Great on the low volume days. Try him out. No worries. But he's your worst player. If you picked him up and you want to move on, do it. And I think Kyle Kuzma's got to go in there. And you're going to say, Josh, Josh Kuzma. Mate, Kuzma's breaking it. You just hate him. You hate him. I don't hate him at all. I just think he's significantly overrated. And the fact that you have that reaction to it, I'm yeah, just talking to nobody here, but there are people here who are definitely saying that, um, would indicate that. Kuzma has been you know, solid this year. He's played 33 minutes a night. Is he a top 120 player? No, he's not. He's averaging 14 and 9. He's still shooting poorly. He's shooting an absolutely horrific 52% from the line. Now, to be fair, that free throw percentage has dropped his ranking probably 20 spots, but he's never been a good free throw guy. He's going to have the return of Rui Hachimura, I guess, at some point in the next five years. I don't know when he's going to come back. And Kuzma's not, like, his overall fantasy profile just doesn't change. He's a no steals, no blocks, no assists guy who's getting some points and rebounds. And if the volume comes down, which I think it will, yeah, the value is going to fall away. You don't drop him it's just straight away, but I think he's got to be considered there. Colin Sexton, DeAndre Hunter. If you don't have injured reserve, you can't hold on to those guys. They're not high enough value to gum up a roster spot. And remember when I say that, in a games cap roto format or a weekly changes league, your bench is your injured reserve. Your bench is your injured reserve. So when I say injured reserve, that is what I'm talking about. But in a daily changes league, you can't hold on to these guys. Kyle Anderson's rostered in a lot of leagues. I don't know why. He's like 140th this season. I know that he did well last year. He's not getting those minutes. He did most of that playing at power forward without Jaron Jackson. That's not the case this year. There are better options out there than Kyle Anderson. The wild thing, Jay Sean Tate, absolutely fine as a 12-team league guy. Like, not a, not a problem having him at all. I just don't think it's necessary. Like, if you dropped him, how badly would you suffer? Like, if you had to drop him to take a flyer on Chemezi Metu, a short-termer on Chetty Osman, would you really be like, oh man, I can't believe I, get, I got rid of Jay Sean Tate. I can't, I, well, how dumb, I, well, how, what's the likelihood of you having that reaction in two weeks? I'd say it's pretty low. Um, and then, Jordan Clarkson. J-O-R-D-A-N-C-L-A-R-K-S-O-N. He can have the big game, for sure. And getting points is a hard thing to do in category leagues. And in a points league, I probably would hold him. But... You know, what is he good at apart from points? He's going to hurt your field goals. He's not going to really get to the line. Assists, steals, blocks, rebounds are all low. Again, the upside of him, you know, add him in on the day the Jazz play low volume. I don't think that it's a particularly large loss to remove yourself from Jordan Clarkson. But it would be a large loss if you didn't check out the new updated website at betonline.ag. 
With basketball season rolling, there's more props, odds, and contests than ever before. And it's the number one spot to place your action for basketball and football. Head to that new updated desktop site or use your mobile device. And if you sign up today using our code Locked On, you get a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. From basketball to football to the NHL to boxing to UFC and right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait and take advantage of all of the great offers we have for the 2021 season. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports. Bet Online is where the game starts. Let's go to some must roster players now. And by must roster, I mean if these guys are sitting on your waiver and all of them, according to either ESPN or Yahoo, are rostered in under 70% of leagues. So it might not apply to many of you, but to some of you, it does. Because we have experienced players who watch this show. We have beginners who watch this show. And the experienced players, we go, there is no competitive league, Josh, that has these guys on the wire. And then the, the, the beginners will come out and go, oh, wow, these guys are available. Maybe I should do something about it. So that's what this is about. All right? If these guys are there, you get them. Ravishing Rick Rubio. He's been killing it. Josh Giddy. The field goal percentage is rough, but if you punt field goal percentage, I reckon he's like a top 70 player. Reggie Jackson and Will Barton. Why are they still on the waiver wire in 30 plus percent of leagues? Jordan Poole. I know that it's going to be a hit at some point when Clay Thompson returns, but that's six weeks away, minimum. Alf Stewart. Is that you, Mr. Stewart? Well, who the hell else do you think it'd be? Get in here, you pair of flaming galahs. The Flamin' Glar, there's no Kelly Olenek. I know it's been frustrating, but you can't have him on the wire. Alex Caruso, the bald eagle. The depressed penis, Sadiq Bay. He needs to be rostered. Jalen the Burner Brunson. And Alperen Shengun. It's a, still a stash for Shengun. Might only be a couple more weeks, but it's still a stash. Let's look at some upside grabs. These are guys just to keep an eye on for deeper leagues, for long term views. Saban Lee is really interesting to me. Dominating the G League. Like, absolutely dominating the G League. Who here thinks Corey Joseph's a good NBA player? Unless your name's Dwayne Casey, the, the answer that I can hear being screamed through the um the screen back at me is nobody. Like, nobody's saying. They're going, this guy's Corey Joseph, he's shit house. All right? And it is. The only person who seems to think that Corey Joseph is useful is your mate, Dwayne Casey. But Saban Lee has been putting up some gigantic numbers in the G League. He's played pretty well when he's been um, in the NBA as well. So he is a really interesting um, stash guy. I don't think that he's necessarily going to take minutes away from old mate Killian Hayes. But in the G League, in his three games, he's averaging 38 points. Yeah, five rebounds, nine assists, 2.7 steals shooting 52% from three on nine attempts per game. And that's one of his downfalls is shooting. He dominated the G League. He is a name to watch. Aaron Wiggins has played 20 plus minutes the last two games. Four, which teams he play for? The Thunder, yeah. So it's the Trey Mann, Ty Jerome, Teo Maladon, maelstrom of shitful guards. And Aaron Wiggins could push into a regular role. Will he take minutes away from Giddy or Gildas Alexander? No. Will Gildas Alexander stay 100% healthy all season? Also no. Just, just a name to watch. Josh Christopher had been replacing DJ Augustin at times in the rotation for the Rockets. I think that that's probably a February type special for Joshy, but I think he's going to get 18 to 20 minutes a night. And if House is gone, Gordo's gone, Kevin Porter gets his 1 million thigh bruise, yeah, there is something there for Christopher. All right, you want ready for something controversial? It's very controversial. I think that there is a decent chance, maybe a 50-50 chance, that Josh Christopher ends up as a better NBA player than cousin Kevin Porter. It's controversial. And you just say, I hate Kevin Porter. I don't. I think he's a bit of a dickhead. And I don't think he's a great NBA player. I think there's a chance that Joshy ends up better. So watch him. And then also, big John Kaminga in Golden State. I've been really impressed. Now, I did not like Kaminga as a draft prospect, really. I liked him as a fantasy prospect because of his ability to get defensive stats, but I thought his horrendous percentages and turnovers would be a real problem. But the way he's playing for Golden State, it's not high usage. He's not taking terrible shots. He's just doing really good defensive stuff. And he's already taken Toscano Anderson's role. He could take Otto Porters. He could take Bielitzas. I wouldn't say he's getting 30 minutes tonight because there's just no way that he's doing that. But injuries strike... 
I've been impressed. I think he's got a rotation role um, on that team. Let's look at some other names that are important. Kevin Herter and Cam Reddish. With John Ray Hunter out, Herter's going to start, but he's dealing with a hammy issue. I think Herter is the 12-team ad, but if Herter's out, Reddish is a 12-team at least option for points and threes. They're worth considering. I'm putting Kobe White here in the other names just to mention not to add Kobe White. In a 16-team league, sure. 14, maybe. 12-team, it's going to take an injury. Just think, Kobe White is a guy that needs high usage and high minutes. And there's Caruso, Levine, DeRozan, who are all better than him. Fourth guards. Fourth guards don't do a huge amount in fantasy. All right, say third guard because... No, no. My mistake. He is still fourth guard. I forgot Lonzo Ball. Holy shit. DeRozan's on a guard. Um, yeah, fourth guards. They don't do anything. There's not enough minutes or touches. Don't add him in 12-team leagues. Killian Hayes. Assists and steals have been solid. He had a shithouse game last time. I still think he's worth, at the very least, 14-team leagues. Dylan Brooksy Brooks. He's going to score. He's going to take a lot of shots. He's going to annoy the shit out of me almost more than any player in the NBA. But he is going to put up shots. And that leads to really good value in a points league. He should be rostered. Emmanuel quickly. The disease scrotum of Arne Fournier has been struggling. Will Tom Thibodeau make a switch? Probably not. But will we see this continual thing of the starters playing fewer minutes and then quickly in the bench getting more? Now, very easily by the end of Wednesday's games, quickly could be playing eight minutes a night because Thibodeau decided to play every starter 45 minutes. That's possible. But I just want to see quickly inside those deeper formats. Jeremiah Robinson Earl, he started three consecutive, four consecutive games for the Thunder. 20 plus minutes. If he ever gets into a 27 minute a night role, I would love that, even as a 12 team league upside guy. But at the moment, I think he's a solid 16 to 14 team league player. Nasir Little, taking minutes from Covington. He's a 12 team option. And then Anthony Simons. At this point, I don't know if Damian Lillard's playing on Wednesday. But with the fact that Lillard has been questionable in three the last three games, he's missed one of them, and we don't know the status for Wednesday. Yeah, Simons probably does need to be held on to at this, uh, at this stage. That will do it for today's show. Don't forget to follow this podcast, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and the Odyssey app. And if you're on YouTube, give me a thumbs up, leave your comments down below, hit the notification bell, and of course, subscribe. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.